Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and you have joined me on my quest to see if we can be able to get 10,000 damage for the first time in World of Tanks. Whether or not it's going to happen, you're just going to have to wait to the end of the video to be able to see, unless you're one of those kind of people who wants to fast forward to the ending and then rewind. That would be disgraceful. It would kind of spoil the whole journey and the adventure. Let me tell you about my journey and my adventure this year on my quest to be able to try and get 10,000 damage. Uh, I have managed to do over 9,000, even 9,900 and I think it was 69 in a 60 TP. I've done over 9,000 odd in a T124, an Object 140, a Yak Panzer E100. The list goes on. Today, we're going to see if the M60 is going to add to the It's Over 9,000 tally. Or if alternatively, it's going to be my first tank where I reach five figures. And um, that would always be quite a nice thing to be able to achieve. What does five figures even mean in World of Tanks? Not really too much. I think it's just one of those goals as whoo! Bit of quick reactions there on the old repair of the tracks. Stops me from creating a bit of a blunder down that slope. And we're going to need all of our hit points to try and get through this one, right? How could we possibly survive losing, I don't know, 300 hit points to that crash? or I don't know, man. Some of the crashes in World of Tanks, it could be a lot more than only 300 or 400. Ooh, talk about over 300 or 400. Mr. Borask, you just took an HE shell to the turret for 528. And we're going to follow it up with another one. Gotcha, indeed. A little bit of a bold position for the Borask there. Quite valiant in a way to try and get forwards. And if there's nobody who manages to get into this position, it can actually really work out for the Borask. Unfortunately for him, this isn't my first rodeo on Malinovka. And I'm going to just charge. Well, what do you mean I'm going to just charge? I'm going to charge pretty much every single time I can if I've got a fast medium tank or a light tank into this position because I just feel like it's just so darn strong. Today, equipment-wise, I'm going to be using vents, I'm going to be using a gun rammer, and I'm going to be using a commander's vision system as well. I feel like this is my favorite setup for an M60 on a map like this. I wouldn't change it at all. I think it's optimal. Uh, the M60 back before Equipment 2.0, was kind of in a bit of a bad position. I'm not saying it's in a great position now, by the way. I'm just saying it was in an even worse position. Because the M60 is the kind of tank that I personally don't think you need coated optics on, because it's got 420 meters base view range. So unless you're a free-to-play player with an incredibly bad crew, you're going to get up to 480, 490 meters view range. And do you really need to pump that up to 530, 540? Probably not. So that's where the commander's vision system has been absolutely beautiful for this vehicle. Because now you've got enough view range to be able to spot your opponents. And what just happened there? How did that FV207 get hit by the Object 430U? I have a sneaking suspicion just after I managed to put in 392 damage to the Centurion 5-1. That the 430 on the hill was actually aiming at the Borask and missed them. And then hit the arty. Wow, I'm not complaining because uh, now we're in a scenario where there's no artillery to have to deal with on the enemy team. So let me go back to what I was talking about with the vision system optics. Once you've got like 480, 490, it's crazy the kinds of spots that you can do. And I feel like the vision system, being able to just get rid of those small bushes that they're in, or even just help mitigate some of the thicker ones, is far more useful than pumping up to 540. But I should really do a statistical analysis. I'm going to try and remember that and try and do that when I come back from my holiday, which I'm most likely on or just about to go to. I've been making so many YouTube videos and pre-preparing them that I'm not even sure which one's coming out on which day. It's going to be which one I feel like or which one I end up actually scheduling because I'm trying to actually have a holiday. Defeats the point when you're pre-uploading videos. You silly sausage. Anyway, 3,092 damage up here so far. Another thing I'd like to mention about this vehicle is that because it has such darn good gun handling, 0.1 when you're moving and when you're turning the turret, and 0 0.08 when you're... Sorry, when you're turning the turret. I meant when you're turning the tank on the 0.1. It's absolutely outrageous how good the gun handling is when you combine it with a 1.6 second aim time, which again is what just frees up so many equipment slots for this vehicle. Ooh, a bit of a miss there on the T-123. I'm feathering the shot, though I don't really need to because we've got the new outline system. And this is where the, uh, should we say, the random nature of this game is going to take into effect. And seeing how you might have seen the title and uh, how this is a quest for 10,000, yeah, uh, keep that in mind when we're plowing through the rest of this battle as to how many shots I'm firing blind at this T-123 here. 
Now, full disclosure, I should have zoomed out probably about a shot or two ago, and I actually saw that that one managed to go through, so there's no point in firing anymore. So when you're blind firing at a tank like that, what you should do is you should go into third person, zoom all the way out as you're firing, and then you'll be able to see whether the shell is disappearing or not. If it's disappearing, don't do anything, continue firing. When I say don't do anything, before you zoom out, you need to hold down your right mouse button to lock your reticle in the same place. And obviously don't move your WASD, otherwise that's going to change uh, where your gun is aiming. And then you can just keep firing and firing and firing. The amount of times that I've, I've managed to track a vehicle and then you just keep tracking them and then you eventually get the kill is just absolutely delicious in that scenario. So again, keep in mind how many shots we fired at the T110E3 there and how many hit points they're going to reappear on considering they've only taken one hit so far as to maybe that's damage that we can add towards at the end on our, on our quest. So in this kind of a scenario on Malinovka, I feel like with nine minutes left on the game, I don't really feel too pressured to be able to go after my opponents. So I'm just going to sit here, chill, hopefully wait for a couple of mistakes, and then maybe I can save my hit points to be able to spend them later on in the battle where they're most likely going to be more valuable. So I was talking more about equipment on this vehicle and about the vertical stabilizers. This game you're seeing is from June. And since then, I've actually unlocked quite a lot of the field mods in the M60 as I've been playing it more and more since. And since I've unlocked more of the field mods, I now have two sets of equipment on this vehicle. The other set of equipment I'm using is gun rammer, vents, well, probably not in that order, probably the vents, gun rammer, and then a durability device. And then that will allow you on maps such as Rundberg, Himmelsdorf, Ensk, Paris even possibly if you want to give up the vision system and want to have a few more extra hit points to really be a little bit of a, of a bruiser in those scenarios. All right, Mr. Borask, 828 hit points there and we're going to just miss the shell. Oh, come on, M60. 0.33 accuracy, not really showing its, its true nature there against the French medium tank. Is that the same Borask from earlier? No, of course it wasn't. I finished off the Borask earlier with the HE shell and the penetration. So many Borasks in the game. Obviously, this replay is from a month ago before they recently sold it. But I can tell you, having played World of Tanks, since Wargaming have sold the Borask, oh my word, there's so many French medium slash light tanks driving it about. And goodness gracious, they're absolute powerhouses. So in this scenario, I'm going to try and blind fire that WTF Panzer IV. He was spotted last time on half the hit points. And again, I should probably just zoom out to be able to see where the shell is going. So what you want to do is aim in, in first person mode. Hold down your right mouse button, zoom out, and just keep firing. And if you see the shells disappearing, then don't stop firing. Uh, unless, of course, you're in a vehicle that has a horrendous rate of fire. And then maybe you don't want to make yourself vulnerable by actually ending up in the reload. So now I'm going to end up pressing my F7 key. And the strv 103 b is actually going to tell me to retreat. But I really want to push the tempo here. Because now with 7 minutes left on the game and the enemy having 12,000 hit points, it's definitely a scenario where I've got to be a little bit more cheeky. And while the strv 103 b is kind of right to tell me to fall back, I'm just going to go for it and I'm going to be trading my HP right now. We take two shots from the FV, give them three, and then hopefully we're going to be able to deliver another one. And there's a fire, but an automatic fire extinguisher goes off. And unfortunately for the FV, I don't want to take another one here, so I'm just avoiding his shell. And I'll let the Char Future 4 finish them off from above. And that's where the M60, where it doesn't have the best DPM, with a gun rammer and vents, it's still not got bad damage per minute, and it can be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a tank like the FE-215B, which also has a very fearsome amount of DPM. This is clearly the best thing about the M60, however, is this these reactionary shots, enough armor on the turret so you will occasionally be able to manage a bounce, but more importantly, amazing 350 heat pen. So our gun actually protected us there from the Progetto 66. The Char Future 4 once again picks up the scraps of us engaging a heavy tank, finishing off the Progetto 66. And I was a little bit unsure about that E75 managing to hit me from over here. So you'll see that's where I'm going to be aiming. Looking for the E50, just making sure that the TVP in the E50 doesn't manage to have a side shot into us. And with five minutes left on the game and still 6,500 hit points on the enemy team, we are one shot away from 7,000 damage. Make that 7,200 damage in all. Yes, reverse there. Reverse there where only I can shoot you, Mr. Gingerbread E75. Oh, nom 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 nom. Unfortunately for me, however, the Centurion 5-1 is in the corner and kind of stops me from being able to engage the E75. But you can see how greedy I am that I really want the damage trying to pump that up, trying to get as much as I can. So the Centurion 5-1 actually managed to shoot me from the front there and damage my tank as well as tracking me. I tell my team where they are. 
Again, they react in the chuff. Future 4 picks up the third kill on a vehicle which I've put to within a one shot. Now up to 8,300 damage. All we need is another 1,700 and we're going to reach that magical five figure sum for the first time. Will it be in the M60 or is it going to be a heartbreak? Well, we're going to see in the next couple of minutes. So come on E50. Take the shell. There's a good chap. Ooh, 425. Better, closer, warmer, stronger. This isn't really the kind of tank that's going to give me the damage, though. And right now, I'm just hoping that the TVP doesn't get isolated. But also, there's the Char Future 4. No, who's been taking all of our kills? Although, when we've left them on very low hit points. We hit the TVP on the move, and immediately I'm thinking, shall I go for this TVP or shall I go for the SCA-1? And will we be able to finish them off in this situation? Well, roll reversal. Now, I'm finishing off the, uh, the damage for the uh, Char Future 4 in this situation. And that was 9,136 damage that we saw, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. And drum roll, please, as we take a look at the post-game stats. Will we have hit two or three blind shots on the T110E3 to make the magical 10k? bum 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 9,541. One shot away once again for the 10k. I'm always going to be a bridesmaid and never a bride when it comes down to that. But nevertheless, we are compensated with still a 9,500 damage game and 1,400 assistance, giving us 10... 11k combined, sorry. We get a Confederate medal for damaging six vehicles that were subsequently killed by, uh, I was going to say our team, but mostly the Char Future 4 and a high caliber for that meaty 9,500. I fire quite a lot of gold rounds here, but I still make a decent profit even after resupplying the consumables, but that's probably because I think I was running a credit booster during this game. And so ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, there you have it. I think this is my fifth unique tank or it, no, it's actually my sixth unique tank if you include the Object 268 version 5 that I've managed to get 9,000 damage in this year, but not quite the 10k. How many more times is this going to go on? Well, we're just over halfway through the year, so it could go on for a, a little bit longer. Anyway, that's it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video in the M60. It's definitely a tank that's starting to surprise me with what it's capable of, with some statistics in the right areas, at least for certain maps. If you enjoyed the video today, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you want to go and check out those two videos, one in the 60TP uh, from a few months ago, and then one in the Jagdpanzer 100 with an impossible comeback, then be my guest. You can find them on the channel. And as always... Thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.